Hola, Reyes y Reinas. Hi, kings and queens. I pray that I find you well rested today and hopefully you've already attended church. Um, I'm praying for the, today for us to have great wisdom, revelation, insight, clarity, knowledge beyond our years of age and that whatever it is that may be distracting us or whatever it is that may be putting fear in us or whatever it is that may be lying to us, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we lay it down and pick up the fruits of the Holy Spirit right now that we surrender everything and anything that may be distracting us or may be causing us some type of fear or even some type of confusion or maybe you just don't feel that you you can you can feel the presence of that confidence of knowing that God's got you I pray in the name of Jesus I rebuke and bind any distraction any nerves any fear right now I pray that we get an activation and that we leave each other greater in faith greater than what we found each other in and that a deeper a knowing and having this intimacy and this intimate time right now with our father in Jesus Jesus name Lord have your way we honor you and we thank you for today and we thank you for today's word and leaving us greater than what you found us in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and today we're reading from Jeremiah 38 20 which reads obey the Lord by doing what I tell you then dot 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 your life will be spared amen and today's title is surrendering to Jesus Thank you, Father, for your word, and thank you, Father, for trusting us and leaving us greater than you found us today in Jesus' name. Surrendering to Jesus. In 1951, Joseph Stalin's doctor advised him to reduce his workload in order to preserve, preserve his health. The ruler of the Soviet Union accused the physician of spying and had him arrested. The tyrant who had oppressed so many with lies couldn't abide the truth. And as he had done so many times, he removed the one who told him the facts. Truth won anyway. Stalin died in 1953. The prophet Jeremiah, arrested for his dire prophecies and kept in chains, told the king of Judah exactly what would happen to Jerusalem. Obey the Lord by doing what I tell you, he said to King Zedekiah. Failure to surrender to the army surrounding the city would only make matters worse. All your wives and children will be brought out to the Babylonians. Jeremiah warned, you yourself will not escape from their hands. Zedekiah, Zedekiah failed to act on that truth. Eventually, the Babylonians caught the king, killed all his sons, sons and burned the city. In a sense, every human being faces Zedekiah's dilemma. We're trapped inside the walls of our own lives of sin and poor choices. Amen. Often we make things worse by avoiding those who tell us the truth about ourselves. All we need to do is surrender to the will of the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Totally in agreement. And you can read more on that in John 14, 6. Today's questions read, how do your life choices line up with the claims of Jesus? I will tell you the fear of the Lord helps me make great decisions and I'm learning that if there's many things on this earth that God doesn't tolerate or when he, they say that you'll go to heaven if you rely and you believe that he is the truth the way and everything that you will get to heaven many people like to believe that everybody goes to heaven I don't believe that not for one minute because I truly believe that as God came to be an example on this earth I realized that he only had 33 years of life he created and he fulfilled and he was assigned a great great calling that none of us would be able to to even comprehend or even to fulfill or even to have a thought process to understand what he did in his 33 years and that's the way he created us to always that he will always remain a mystery to us because the way he came and he lived is the way we should live he came and he held people accountable he loved people and what i'm learning is that the choices that he chose the way he chose to live is the way we should live and the way he didn't tolerate things and the way we cannot do things if not we will not get to heaven it's the same way here on earth if he's not going to tolerate things there's a lot of things on this earth that we should not be able to tolerate and we should not be able to do we're not able to do because he's trying to give us a protection i believe that when he gives us strategic ways of living 
it's not always like we have the Ten Commandments, right? And we shouldn't do those things because those are just borders, boundaries that he's telling us not to pass because we will cause great harm on ourselves or our children. They're going to be the decisions that we make and the choices that we make are going to affect us. They're going to affect our children. They're going to affect our children's children. They're going to continue on down the line, which I call generational cursings. Um, and I believe that if we continue living the way he's called us to live, the choices will line up of the claims of Jesus, which means the promises that he promised promises for our life and a lot of boundaries that we that he gives us they're not there it's not like it's it's sinning but when we disobey him it's sinning and i believe that when he gives us strategic ways of living it's like he told me there was things that he's told me that i cannot do that i've seen other people do and other believers can do and i'm like well why can't i do those things i'm realizing that he wants to protect me he wants to protect the way of living he wants me to break generational cursings that my family did before me and therefore i will have a different result in my life in jesus name so how do my life choices line up with the claims of jesus i will tell you that a lot of things that i do or i don't do is because i have fear as for one, I used to go and drink until I would forget who I was or I would forget who I was called to be. And that was one of my uh, coping mechanisms of things that I would do. I would just drink until I would forget things and then I would wake up and have such regret or like, what did I do last night? But I would get drunk with alcohol so I would lose control. I was no longer sober minded. I would lose control of what I did. So therefore, I wouldn't have a conscience. What did that do for my life? Every time that I would drink and I would black out and not remember things, it would bring Bring such sabotage to my life such sabotage I wish that you know when we I wish many people would know that the life that sin brings and sin can necessarily be different for each one of us because he calls us to obey him and if we disobey him there's going to be um, catastrophe of, uh, of uh, consequences the second question is what's keeping you from surrendering to him a lot of things that used to get in the way of me surrendering to God, which was my, I used to love to drink alcohol. Um, what would get in the way of surrendering to him with that was anything that would trigger me emotionally or mentally to where I felt inadequate of things, I would drink. Um, and that's why I would drink. So I could not hear his voice anymore. That was straight up the truth. And what I've noticed now is that a lot of things that I was not surrendering to him, I've surrendered now. And I'm learning that there's a confidence. Um, and I literally looked up the word confidence because it was a, it was a firm in like dependent in something you're you're firm and trusting and knowing in something so you walk around with the confidence and i truly believe that comes from having the peace of god and having the peace of god in me and that no matter what i face or whatever i have fears in my heart i'm learning that when i surrender to him i have this just knowing that whatever the outcome is is going to best benefit my life and in obeying him there's some things that like I can't do and I want to do but I've learned that when I obey him he saves me from a multitude of pain he saves me from a multitude of regret and he saves me from things that could potentially end my life or end my children's lives or basically just threaten the lives of my children or threaten the lives of my loved ones um and i truly believe that the only reason why that i am alive today is because i turned from a lot of things that i used to do and um i believe in obeying him even in the most smallest things there's things that he'll ask me to do and i'm like why do i have to do that like why it's just so small but i would tell you that if we're obedient in the small and he can trust us in the small he can trust us with great which means whether that's finances, whether that's relationships, whether that's a career or a business. If he can trust you in surrendering little things to him, and I will tell you, obedience, if he can trust you with relationships, finances, he can put you in a place of great power and influence. And when he can trust you with that, you 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 don't even you can't even fathom the opportunities that he would bless you with but it's if he can trust you and i noticed that i can only surrender where i trust and he has never let me down i have gone through some things that he has brought to my life that could be painful or hurtful or things challenging that i just don't want to go through but i've realized that no matter what it is he's growing a relationship in me he's growing a trust where i can surrender everything and whatever it is that i haven't surrendered as of yet i pray that the lord reveals it to me and I pray that he reveals it to you, that he gives you a clarity, a, re a revealing right now in the name of Jesus of things that you've had thoughts of. Those are the things. Whatever comes to mind immediately right now, when I'm speaking and you, something is revealed to you, that's the clarity of what he's trying to reveal to you to please surrender it to him. 
Surrender your spirituality. Surrender your mentality. Surrender your life in the name of Jesus. I'm going to end in this prayer and also another prayer. Um, today's prayer is compassionate God. Please forgive us for the pride that keeps us from you. Amen, Lord. The ego, we have egos and that's edging God out. Our egos become bigger than what God is or, or God wants for us. And because of that, that is what hurts us and puts us in pride and we will not ask for help where we need help and you maybe you won't ask people in the in like human like human people but it's important that you ask the spiritual help which is god god can give you the the help that you need and if you have